Hello, my name is Ira Smith, president of Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. First, I hope that you, your family, your friends are all safe and healthy during this COVID-19 pandemic. Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. is fully operational. Both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions that you might have. We are doing so by telephone or video conference. So if there's anything troubling you, anything you want to know, reach out and contact us. We would be happy to speak with you. Today's Brandon's blog will be of special interest to those self-employed people who are running their business, not through a limited company, but in their personal name, a proprietorship or a partnership, and those that lend money, especially on home mortgages. So I hope you can watch until the end of the video. I know you will get value. I'm going to get rid of this tie and I will be right back. I do have some notes, so I will be referring to them. In July 2018, Brandon wrote a blog called Mortgage Lending Criteria Self-Employed, Biggest Myth May Be Right. In that blog, he described a case in the federal court, Canada versus the Toronto Dominion Bank. What had happened in that case was that there was a man who operated a landscaping business. In 2007 and 2008, he collected GST that he did not remit to Canada Revenue Agency. Collected an unremitted GST, HST, or source deductions is a deemed trust claim against the assets of the business. So if you're self-employed and operating in your own business name, there's no difference between your business assets, your personal assets. It's all one thing, they're your assets. Then in 2010, he applied to the bank to get both a home mortgage and a home equity line of credit registered against his home. And the bank lent him his money, it had nothing to do with his business. Almost two years later, he sold his home in 2011 and for the home sale to close his lawyer paid out the home mortgage in full the home equity line of credit in full and the bank of course gave a discharge of its security the house was sold and off everyone went no problem well two years later Canada Revenue Agency made demand on the bank, so this is now in 2013, for payment of the unremitted GST. It was about $70,000, almost $70,000. The bank resisted that demand, and so Canada Revenue Agency took the bank to court. And the federal court decided that the bank was liable to pay over the amount of the unremitted GST that it got from the sale of the person's house. And the reason for that is because in the Excise Tax Act, which deals with GST, HST taxes, it says that if you are the recipient of funds from the sale of assets that the Crown had a deemed trust claim on and you get that money, you owe that money to the government. So the bank appealed the decision to the Federal Court of Appeal and the matter was heard in the fall of 2019. And at the end of April 2020, the Federal Court of Appeal rendered its decision. Now, the Federal Court of Appeal went through a very lengthy and detailed analysis of the case law, of the statutes, 
and of the decision of the lower court. And I'm not going to go into all those details on this video, but you can read it down below in the blog. The bank had raised several areas in its appeal. First, it said that the federal court judge erred in not agreeing with the bank that there has to be a triggering event, such as a secured creditor going to enforce its security before the deemed trust claim can attach to the proceeds of the sale of the asset of the person. The bank said that the competing claims over the priority cannot even be triggered until both parties are fighting over it. So there has to be that triggering event. Well, the Federal Court of Appeal looked at everything and said, no, there doesn't have to be a triggering event because the statute says that when the GST or HST or unremitted source deductions are owing, the property actually belongs to the Crown. The deemed trust claim is such that it makes the property of the person property of the Crown. So there's no need to wait for a fight over the assets. So that was their first submission that the Federal Court of Appeal did not agree with. The next one that they said was uh, they were relying on was the fact that they are a bona fide purchaser for value, that the fact that they received the money meant that they were a bona fide purchaser of that money. And the Federal Court of Appeal said, no, the lower court was correct in not buying that argument because if that was the case, then the statute would not be effective against any secured creditor whatsoever, and that was not the intention of Parliament. So their second reason for appealing the lower court's decision, the Federal Court of Appeal did not agree with. Finally, their third position was that the loan they made to the man, both loans, the mortgage and the HELOC, had nothing to do with his business, and they had no knowledge of his business affairs whatsoever. The Federal Court of Appeals said the fact that it had nothing to do with his business means nothing. The Federal Court was correct in deciding that way because the statute says every person doesn't distinguish between a taxpayer as the business person and the same taxpayer in his or her personal capacity. So the Federal Court of Appeal did not allow for that area of appeal either. And it also went on to say that the fact you had no knowledge of the business affairs was not even evidence in front of the federal court. So you can't appeal on that basis here. So what does that mean? That means if you are a lender, if you're just doing a simple home mortgage, you need to understand to protect yourself, is the person you're about to advance the money to self-employed? So on the loan application, you should make sure it asks the question, are you self-employed? Is it a proprietorship, a partnership, a corporation? What is the CRA tax business number? That's the first step. Secondly, as part of your term sheet, you should have a requirement that the person is going to produce a statement from their CRA My Business account or some other evidence, verifiable evidence coming from Canada Revenue Agency that you do not owe any collected and unremitted GST, HST, or source deductions. Perhaps there might be just the stub period outstanding, the period that they're currently in that they haven't even filed uh, the return yet for. But other than that, there is nothing owing. There is current. That should be a one of the terms of the credit. Then, of course, that evidence is supplied before you actually advance the funds. 
finally, our fourth killer point is that there needs to be in all the documentation, the term sheet, the loan documentation, the security documentation, even the discharge documentation that says, if Canada Revenue Agency comes after us for unremitted amounts as a deemed trust from your business, even though we're not lending to your business, and even though you may have fully repaid the loan outstanding at the time, we can still come after you and you're still liable to us for that proven deemed trust claim. You have to pay us the money and we will remit it to the government on your behalf. So those are the four ways a simple mortgage lender can protect themselves against a deemed trust claim years later by Canada Revenue Agency when they advance mortgage funds and then get repaid on that mortgage by a self-employed person. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've gotten value from this Brandon's blog. If you have any questions on any matter whatsoever, feel free to shoot either Brandon or myself an email, give us a phone call. We would love to hear from you. We would love to help you. So please take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay healthy.